all right then welcome back everyone let's solve this question or divisor now this question uh, is also an easy one most of the questions in this 900 rated questions i found out is uh, by simple observation you are able to solve it it's just the complexity of observations have increased a little bit but yeah it's still manageable right so it was a div 3a question so <laughs> you are maybe unlucky if you find this question but anyway uh, let's see the question is we are given an integer n uh, which is also positive check if n is a odd divisor greater than 1 of course because uh, every number is divisible by 1 right so if it has a odd divisor it has to be greater than 1 it, that odd divisor should not be 1 fine and uh, that's that so 6 has a odd divisor 3 n equals to 4 a number doesn't exist fine so the input is only the number n uh, the constraint you can see it's 1 e 14 so you please use long long here they already mentioned it right of course it's a div 3 question so they have to mention it but don't expect this uh, good information to be mentioned okay in div 2 contest and for each case print yes if n is a odd divisor greater than 1 okay because every number is divisible by 1 so that doesn't count and no otherwise you cannot put yes or no any order and fine so they have given some test cases and uh, maybe if you can make some observation it's good otherwise let's see the main take of this video is i'm going to show you uh, how bit manipulation can be helpful at times right so uh, slowly slowly you have to little learn little complicated topics now right so we are going to introduce topics like bit manipulation and somewhat some complicated topics in number theory in this playlist going forward right so let's just quickly go to sublime and try to make sense out of this question the question is simple we are just given an integer n and you have to find if number is odd divisor or not now one clear-cut observation that i was able to make is if uh, n is odd i guess uh, n was uh, greater than 2 right so if n is odd uh, definitely yes right if n is odd then the number itself is odd divisor because notice one thing they have put a restriction that one cannot be divisor of this number but the number itself can be divisor of itself right so these are the cases when you have numbers like this 3 5 7 9 so on right so if a number is odd of course odd divisor exists the number itself and what if the number is even then then we'll have to see uh, when it can be possible or not now i wanted to see whether a number is odd divisor or not right so it was getting too abstract for me so i thought uh, what is the simplest way to see the divisors of a number uh, it quickly uh, uh, strike in my mind that uh, let's try to see the prime factorization, right? Let's try to see the prime factorization of a number and uh, see if I can make some observation. So what is the prime factorization of a number? It looks something like this, right? Uh, 2 power a into 3 power b into 5 power uh, c into 7 power uh, d, so on, right? So basically all the prime factors are listed here. And uh, so a prime factorization number is like this, right? 2 power a into 3 power b into 5 power c into 7 power d. And uh, this a, b, c, d, uh, a, b, c, d are basically greater than or equal to 0, right? So, the powers, the powers are greater than or equal to 0, right? Because uh, all, all the prime factors need not be present for a given number. So, what is the prime factorization of 12? It's 2 power 2 into 3. What is the prime factorization of 15? Uh, it's a uh, 3 into 5, right? So, b is 1, c is 1. What is prime factorization of 63? Yeah, 63 is what? 9 into 7. So, it is 3 square into 7 power 1, right? So, this is right. This, you know, right? this prime factorization. <laughs> this is simple elementary school math. So, what can you see in this prime factorization? Okay, 2, 3, 5, 7. And what next after 7? After 7, uh, you will have 11, right? You will have 11. So, 11 power e. 11 power e. So, notice one thing here. Uh, all the prime factors apart from 2 are odd. Right? So, observation. Good observation here. All the prime factors, all the prime factors except 2 are odd. Right, so this is a very good observation. So what does it say? If I remove all the powers of 2, if I remove all the powers of 2, and I am still left with some number greater than 1. Right, so, so provided this b, c, d, e all are not 0. So, after removing, after removing all the powers of 2, all the 2s basically, basically after removing 2 power a, that is after removing 2 power a, if I am left with some number greater than 1, some number greater than 1, some number greater than 1, then of course I have a odd divisor. Right, so guys, what I'm saying is, if you have something like this, let's say 2 power 2 into 3 power 4 into 5 power, let's say 2. So if I remove all the powers of 2, then I'm left with some positive number, right? So in the worst case, let's say I have just 3, 3 power 1. I'm still left with 1, 3, right? So in this case, in this case, I'm sure that I have a odd divisor, right? So very simple, guys. See, if n is even, it was getting harder for me to visualize the divisor. So what I thought is, the simplest way to look at a number is using its prime factorization, right? By looking at the prime factorization, you can see all the prime factors except 2 are odd. All the prime factors except 2 are odd. So what does it say? After removing all the 2s, if you are left with a number greater than 1, that is some, you have a prime factor apart from 2. So what is this uh, checking is, what is this checking is, uh, whether a number has a prime factor apart from 2, 
apart from two, uh, apart from only two, then of course it is odd divisor. Right? Of course it is odd divisor. In other words, in other words, any one of these prime factors need to have a power at least one. Right? If all of them are zero, B, C, D, E, so on. If all the other prime factors are having power zero, then you cannot have an odd divisor. Or you can say, if the number is a power of two, then it is not odd divisor. Then it cannot have odd divisor. And other way to put it. Right? So whoa, what does what did I say? See. If this number need to have an odd divisor, any one of these guys need to be present, right? Any one of these powers B, C, B, C, D, E needs to be one, uh, greater than equals to one, right? But if all of these, all of these powers, so three is not there, five is not there, seven is not there, eleven is not there, the next thirteen is not there. If all the other prime factors are not there and only two is part as a prime factor, then you cannot have odd divisor. In other words, if two is only the prime factor, if two is the only prime factor of this number, what does it say? The number is a power of two, right? So the question is simple: if the number is a power of two, the number is power of two, then no else yes right so like this even you need not check it this is like a universal condition right so it doesn't even matter uh, whether number is odd even if the number is power 2 it automatically says you only have 2 as it 2 as its prime factor so anyway it's not possible it cannot have odd divisor else yes so this handles the case of uh, when number is odd as well right when number is odd and uh, this case uh, in this case when number is even number is even and not power of 2 right so Simple observation, right? By looking at the prime factor, prime factorization, you found out if the number is power of two, that is, it only has two as its prime factor, then definitely you cannot have odd divisor. Otherwise, you'll definitely find it. So after removing all the twos, you'll definitely have one of the other prime factors remaining and all the other prime factors are odd. So this is the pseudocode. If number is power of two, print no, otherwise print yes. Fine. So there is a smart way to check whether a number is power of two or not, and that is in bit manipulation. So if you want to check basically if a number n is a power of two or not, uh, n bitwise n minus 1 should be equal to 0. If n bitwise n minus 1 is equal to 0, this says uh, that uh, n is the power of 2. Just take a simple number, let's say 8. So this is the binary representation of 8, right? So what is the binary representation of 7? It will be 0, 1, 1. So just perform bitwise n between these two guys. What do you get? What do you get? You get all the zeros, right? So if n bitwise n minus 1 is 0, then n is the power of 2, right? So this condition, uh, you can just write it here. If n bitwise n minus 1 is 0, uh, then print no, otherwise print yes. So code, I guess, uh, really not much. You just have to write if n and n minus 1 equal equals to 0, n and n minus 1 equal equals to 0, then uh, print yes, followed by a new line, else, okay, sorry, if it is a power of 2, then no, it's not possible, it doesn't have odd divisor, otherwise print yes, followed by new line. Usually, like, whenever you use bitwise operators, uh, surround them in a bracket, okay, because uh, you will run into otherwise precedence uh, issues, so, Keep it simple. Uh, whenever you use bitwise operators, uh, always make sure you use parentheses as much as possible. Otherwise, you will run into precedence issues. Okay, let's just quickly run it and see if it works. So, no, yes, no, yes, yes, no. No, yes, no, yes, yes, no. Yeah, fine. It seems to be working. Let's just quickly submit it. And it works. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you got something out of this video. Uh, and one more thing, you can solve this question using a normal while loop as well. You can just keep removing the two from the number. Like, you can keep remo removing two from the number by keep continuously dividing it by two. So it will consume a login, like it will consume a time of login, and then you can do it. It will also be submitted here. But fine, I just wanted to show you bit manipulation, how bit manipulation can be used. I'll probably, in the description box, uh, submit both the solutions uh, for you to look out. Fine, I'll see you in the next one then.